Hello, Hank. It's Monday, but it, it might be Sunday in your place. Basically, uh, today's video is inspired by another video on gender toilet by Washington University or something like that. You should click here and watch that video before you watch this one to get some context. Uh, I personally don't care about which toilet people use. You can just use whatever you want. I, I don't mind. Um, but this kind of prompt me thinking where to draw the line. Like, what can you claim to be your identity? What you cannot claim to be your identity? My approach to this will be a gradient of things. There are things that's subjective and there are things that's objective. For example, your age is objective. Your height is objective. Your sex or your species is objective. Your ethnicity is objective. But your culture is subjective and your gender is subjective. And uh, in subjective things, I think there are it's useful to differentiate between perceived and claimed identity. Basically, what you claim you to yourself to be, and what other people think you are. And these two might not be the same. For example, I might claim to be Canadian because I've spent four years in Canada and I love every ice cap I had back in Canada. And I also kind of have a teeny tiny bit of Canadian accent. Um, yeah. So in my opinion, uh, a person's identity is what they claim to be. But in the meantime, they are not free from other people's criticism. Uh, this way, everyone get to voice their own opinion, which is great. You have the freedom to go to whichever toilet you want to go, knowing that if you choose a one that's, that you are likely to perce be perceived as the opposite gender, people might feel uncomfortable with that because they are kind of undressed or improperly dressed. And they have the freedom to hold back their opinion, just like you have the freedom to hold yours. In both cases, I meant negative freedom, of course, as in free from constraints. So sometimes I really just don't give a fuck about how people think about me. Sometimes I try to make others comfortable, and that's that's a choice I get to make every day. And uh, yeah, so this also implies you cannot stop others from entering your toilet or locker room and see you improperly dressed or not dressed at all. And I have a feeling that's going to make people in certain culture unhappy if they dress in a special way. Uh, and if you're in men's room to avoid people who you perceive as women, you will have to deal with that. Let's also consider a similar case, which is cultural appropriation. Some people are offended when people who aren't their culture participate in their cultural activities. For example, non-Japanese people dressed in kimonos, uh, or non-Chinese people say ni hao or xie xie. Uh, they are people who take offense and say it removes the original meaning of their cultural symbol and things. It's an attack to their cultural identity. It's disrespectful and uh, yada yada yada. And that sounds awfully similar to it's an attack to my gender identity. So if you think you should be free to appropriate another culture, but they aren't free to appropriate your gender, I would like to hear your reasoning behind it. I would also like to ask you the question whether you are triggered or require a safe space. In my opinion, just like gender, people have the right to participate in another culture, no matter how... In my opinion, just like gender, people have the freedom to participate in another culture, no matter how awkward their attempt may be. And uh, in the meantime, others have the freedom to criticize it. And again, both freedom, I meant negative freedom. But different from gender appropriation being a personal choice, I think cultural appropriation should be actively encouraged. Japan is a rich example. They took a lot of other cultures and made them even more delicious. In fact, I would say ramen is a part of Japanese culture, despite having originated in China. 
Same as the kanji culture, which Japanese people have contributed so much to today's Chinese and Korean language, it has become a shared culture. And all that started from their cultural appropriation. I'll still criticize people no matter its culture or gender if they are on the unfortunate side of the uncanny valley. But what I won't say is, hey, stop pretending to be a man when you are not. Or, you are not Chinese and you don't have my permission to do our culture. I think that's just kind of mean to people. So in summary, people should be free from the constraint to do whatever they want when they aren't hurting others, but they shouldn't be free from criticism in doing so, just like I am not free from your criticism. If this video made you think, please share your mind in the towel section, and I will be eagerly waiting your confrontation. Thanks for watching this video, and DFTBA.